This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and today I'm not even sure who I have on the screen. She's wearing a, you know, this tiara or crown or whatever you want to call it. But we're gonna <laughs> talk life with Alicia, and maybe Alicia can explain how she became royalty all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, I'm always royalty in my own head. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Uh, You know, um, holidays are fun, or they're supposed to be fun, and not every gift is serious. Um, I'm obsessed with with British royalty, (laughs) and uh, I've always wanted a tiara. (laughs) (laughs) And so my baby sister got me a tiara for Hanukkah, and my daughter said, well, mommy, you have to wear it today. So. Absolutely. She's absolutely right. Because, you know, you are royalty on your own show as well. So, yes. hey, it goes perfect. So before we get into the holidays, why are you obsessed with British royalty? What I have no idea. Happen? Oh, you have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I have always, I've always had an affinity for Great Britain I've in England. Um, I'm a history buff to begin with, but I don't know. There, there's something of I, th- their story is actually so tragic. Uh, but I, and I don't know. I, Queen Elizabeth II is always her life has fascinated me. Um, her offspring have definitely fascinated me. But I, I mean, I remember waking up and 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 seeing. Um, Princess Diana and Prince Charles getting married. Like um, when uh, Prince William got married, I was like, I was awake. I was like, ooh, I have to be at this royal wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they are very interesting. And I will say that I've watched The Crown. And I know The Crown is not 100% true. Okay. It's, you know, it's it's historical fiction. Yeah. Um, And that got me you know, thinking about, you know, what it must really be like to have to live in this window where everybody, you know, looks through and sees you and they all think they know you. Um, Because, I mean, that can happen to many of us in everyday life where, you know, our neighbors or acquaintances think, oh, I really know the real Karen or the real Alicia. But no, you're looking through a window and you're making assumptions of who I am. or it's the self that you put out there. Well, I, I, yeah. There, I, I have friends who who are therapists or 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 who are doctors, and they their persona they have two different personas. I, I don't have that. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had that, but I, I don't. I think also we reveal to people what we want them to see and not necessarily who, what we present could be a facet. It's not us in totality. Um, I don't, I think our interactions may be genuine or disingenuous depending on on how you are. Um, But I always think that it's what we present. And so you do get, you do get um, glimpses, but I think we're also very judgmental. And so our own judgments come into play as as well. And so I think that when it's the lens we're looking through, it's not, we're looking, we're voyeurs and I'm, I don't know, I'm a voyeur by nature, but you know, you could see a a shot of my family having a huge ass argument and be like, oh my God, this is the most dysfunctional family. Well, yeah, we are dysfunctional, but that's how we function. Um, and it's, it's what we do, but you, when you see that argument could be like, oh my God, this is a vicious family. Um, and because you're putting your own, you're, you're viewing it through your own lens, your own experiences. So, um, it just, it's always fascinated me really of with Queen Elizabeth about what, like losing her father. Um, and having a crown that she was not supposed to have, but, you know, her, her uncle didn't, you know, didn't step up (laughs) and 
you know, it was bred into her, you know, that this is your duty. This is your loyalty. This is where you go. And it be, it, it was her calling and she embraced it. And I just, I, I think the, what she have, what she's had to give up. Quite a bit. Yes. Um, and you can eat like reading just historically and stuff, but she, she took her calling her, her birthright, so to speak, um, very seriously. Well, and you know, if, if you look at most of us, as, as I was saying, sometimes people look through the window and they think they, they see what they want to see. Sure. So when you brought up this, you know, your family can be loud and argumentative, but you understand what that's all about. You understand that's part of your way of resolving issues in Sometimes. a little court. Yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up in a house where my parents were called the Bickersons, and yet they were the most loving couple. When you describe uh, your mother and father, you know, Big Al and Blanche, that's my dad and mom. You know, they always wanted to be together. They held hands together. They kissed, you know, but yet if one of them needed to say something and they didn't think they were being heard, their voices would get louder and louder and louder. And if we kids were around, we sort of got pulled into it because of the chatter. Um, I being such a sensitive kid, always thought that that argument was my fault, even though it didn't even start out being an argument. It could have just been a question, hey, where did you place that piece of paper? Okay. And then it got into the whole house is a mess and, you know, we have no money and our kids are brats and whatever. Um, so person looking in, they're going to see that as, you know, absolutely horrible that we're beating up on each other. But in reality, you know, that's not who we were. Um, you know, we had, like you said, we had dual personalities to some degree. And I think we have to understand that about each other when we meet. Um, you know, my son has been attempting to do online dating dur during COVID. And some of the stories that he shares, you know, how young women, they're, they appear to be open, they appear to be vulnerable, and then, you know, they'll say yes to something, and then all of a sudden, they block you. And he goes, but this is not the person who I saw, I saw this other person. And he's very black and white. He is who he is. And most of us aren't. We have those little bits and pieces in us that change us. Mm -hmm. So you're wearing this crown because your sister gave it to you for Hanukkah. Yes. So what was Hanukkah like when you were growing up? Was it eight nights of holiday festivities and giving gifts? Or uh, was it, you know, a box of crayons one day and a coloring book the next? I honestly don't remember. Really? You know, I, I really don't remember. I, it's, 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 I was trying to actually think about that earlier because, you know, with my kids getting older and I'm all about making memories with them. And I remember when they were like, oh, his baby's first, you know, Max's first Hanukkah. And it had to be perfect, so to speak. And I really still don't know exactly how we define that one, but <laughs> Um, it was never a major holiday. I mean, we would get, we got one big present, yep. but, and we got little presents, yep. um, and we got to light the menorah and we would go to temple for family services, I think. Um, but I really, it wasn't, it, it, the holiday time was holiday time. I remember when, cause breaks, I don't know, they didn't end like right before Christmas, but I remember going to my dad's office. You know, and that was his busy time. So, yeah. because, you know, school teachers were out, so people were getting, you know, done what they needed to get done right. before yeah. their deductible in January. So I, I don't, you know, <laughs> at 44 years old, I was, I was actually thinking about that. I have fond memories of one of my dad's colleagues um, when we would go over there and, and be with them on Christmas Eve. Um, and I've always been obsessed with the tree, so I have one. Um, I, 
you know, we were pagans all once, so I don't understand the problem. <laughs> um, and Hanukkah is the festival of lights, and I don't understand why we can't just light the whole neighborhood up. But and, and we can. There's, you know. Oh, yeah. There is no right. There is no wrong. Um, and when it's a festival, you know, which Hanukkah is, um, right. you know, I think however we choose to celebrate it and commemorate it and keep those memories, um, you know, is absolutely wonderful. And, you know, here in our house, we, I can't even say we celebrate, we acknowledge Hanukkah and Christmas. Okay. Mm -hmm. For many years, I would put up a Christmas tree because I thought my husband and my mother-in-law expected it of me. Um, right. until one day my husband saw how much work I was going through. And he said, why are you doing this? And I said, well, why aren't you helping me? And he looked at me, he said, because it's not important. And that's when I realized it wasn't so much about the tree. Okay. It was about the spirit of the holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and he once asked me, he said, so how did you celebrate Hanukkah? I mean, you had eight nights of gifts, you know, we only have one day of gifts. But I, I was brought up similar to you. There was one probably big present during those eight days. And the rest were small little tokens. Or my mother would hold on to something that my grandparents were going to give me. And I got that one night. Um, but a lot of people just think that these holidays should all be about giving in gifts. And yet, I think the gift that your sister gave you probably is more meaningful than just about anything else i mean to me it is looking at you yeah i mean that that's the like um i think so my gifts and, and how i look at stuff it's um there's always meaning behind it it's not just stuff uh, which is why black friday shopping is my thing but i always have a plan um, the, I try to do it with their kids, um, they are, one night is a night of warmth. So they always get, they know they get their pajamas. Right. Um, if you saw on Facebook, I've, I've wanted a family picture of the six of us for like a couple of years now. And we, well now, especially with, with the vid as we're calling it in our household, uh, who's going to come and take a picture and then us all getting together. And then, you know, my family doesn't, you can come in, um, <laughs> that, that we, uh, okay. That we, hi Bailey. Uh, How are you? And I just finished school. You just finished school. It's only like 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> wow. I finished school early. You finished school early. I do school fast. So what are you going to do the rest of the day? Well, I can do now ballet be and tap because my mom got me a portable floor and portable bar. Wow. For what holiday? For Hanukkah. That is wonderful. So just actually you came in just at the right time. Yep. So we, we take this family picture and this one in all of our, we had to have a serious one. So we had one with the tiara and then we had one where we're just normal except this one likes to cross her eyes. And so every family photo that we have of Hanukkah has cross-eyed <laughs> Bailey in it. I love it. My, <laughs> my mother used to do that. Oh, there she goes again. <laughs> my mother used to do that too. And we'd say, why are you ruining the picture? And she'd say, because when you look at this, you will just be happy. And she's right. When I look at those pictures now, it, it, it made me smile. So. Well, and and that's the whole thing. So we we've talked before in in other um, podcasts about you know the perfect the perfect holiday. What are you doing? Okay, I'm trying to <laughs> you're trying to get comfy. Okay, yeah. you're trying to get comfy. Apparently, here's my co-host today. <laughs> there we go. Are you are you good? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, you know the perfect holiday. And, and everything has to be perfect and, and all of these things. Oh, huh, ADHD come in full force. So we were talking about this picture. So I decided this year as a gag gift, so to speak, that we all have, um, it says Hanukkah 2020 and there has a dreidel with a mask. Yeah. 
That's not the real one that you're wearing. Me and my brother and mom got a matching shirt. Oh, I like that. And (laughs) pants. Wow. And my doll, Courtney, also has matching dreidel. Like a onesie that's dreidels. And I have that is, And I see her feet, too. (laughs) I don't wear socks. No, you don't wear socks. No. So, so the kids always know they're going to get a set of pajamas. They always, like, so there are certain themes that I try to set through the night. Yeah, like, every year I get two American Girl dolls. One for Hanukkah and one for my birthday. But who's that coming from? My grandparents. And? And. Yes. (laughs) So, but like she just mentioned, like she has a portable floor now and a portable bar so she can practice. Ballet and tap. Yes. And she's taking yeah. right after her mom. She is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, so um, boop. <laughs> so yeah, nothing is perfect in my household, but, but this is perfect. You know what? He, and, he, and that's the whole thing. I... I gave up a long time ago. You know what? I remember what podcast it was. We were when you when you first started, and your mom had passed away. Yes. And about rituals, and about getting everything right, and how sad and horrible that really is. It's daunting. And and, oh, you can come. You can come in too, honey. See, (laughs) you have two podcasts, two hosts today. Say hi. Uh, hey, and me and my brother are matching pages. Huh? I so, love it. So how are you? Good. How are you? Fine. How's school? Good. Good. I understand you're doing very, very well. He's in yeah. sixth grade. That is terrific. <laughs> Did you have a question? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably wondering where I was. Probably. Probably. So, but I, but, so, you know, all of these rituals. And like I said, I don't... I remember doing Hanukkah with my, my, my mom's mom. And I remember doing Hanukkah a little bit with my dad's family. Um, but here's a prime example. So I've ordered something on Amazon. They have lost the package. I cannot find it. Um, I only have, well, there are eight nights. And so they have, their dad has them for four. I have them for four. And usually the last night is when I give their really big present. Well, Max's really big present isn't here. So Max is getting his medium-sized present so I can open up my portable bar and floor. Right. Aww. And I bet you my mom's going to use it too. <laughs> Probably. But, you know, so I, I, I'm i distraught at 3.30 this morning uh, because I get from the, from the seller, uh, will we show it delivered? We're going to refund your money. And I'm like, I don't care about the money. Like, I, I just, where is this bike? Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> so I order a new one. It's not coming till January. So, you know, but, but you know what? He doesn't care. He got a scoot, electric scooter and I have a bike and a normal Wow, scooter. an electric scooter. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I don't like electric scooters. They go you away. don't. And they scare me when they turn off. But what do I tell you what's the most important part about the holidays? It's not what we get, right? Yeah. What do I tell you? I forgot. You forgot. Thanks. This is like our shining moment of my big parenting moment. And you're like, I forgot. (laughs) What is it better to do than to... It's better to give than to receive. That's right. Yeah. And so that's... So Max not getting his present on the actual, you know, seventh night of Hanukkah is not a big deal right and like and and this one who's only eight going on 30 um (laughs) that she for delaying for opening up a practice her present is not a big deal no because it's going to be here what when it (laughs) and and sadly you know we look around and we we make our judgments based on the media, you know, Um, you watch a Hallmark movie and everything in a Hallmark movie is supposed to be perfect. And so we all assume, well, why can't my life be perfect? But I have to tell you, it was my father, probably the year before he passed away. 
He was in good spirits. Um, and he knew he had a bad heart and he kept saying, you know, this may be my last holiday with you. And I was, and I would say to him, but you've been telling me that my whole life. So no, this is not the last holiday, but he had us all come together and he deliberately said, do not bring anything with you. Don't bring any baked goods. Don't bring any gifts. Don't bring any wine, nothing. I just want you all to come to Detroit to be with us. And we did. And it's the first time that any of us ever walked into our parents' house as adults without something. Mm -hmm. But it felt so comfortable because in the past, we sort of looked at each other. Oh, you got mom and dad this. I got mom. And we were judging each other, not on purpose, but it's just what, what would come about. Sure. This time, we were just all together as people. And I'm so glad we did that because, you know, we shared stories. We shared love. We, um, we did have a few of those rip-roaring arguments too. But then we hugged and kissed and made up. Um, yeah. And I think that's what makes that, that time very, very special. Um, cause you don't remember the gifts, you know, someday she's going to grow up. She's not going to remember the portable floor and a bar. Right. I probably won't remember when I got it or yeah, yeah because I, I have bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I would still keep the portable bar and floor. Okay. That sounds good. But I mean, that's, but that, but that's, that's the whole thing. I think it's about the, the meaning. That's why with their gifts and stuff, it, for us, it is all about meaning and there's not anything that they get. They usually get something they need, something they want, something for warmth, something for fun. You know, so they do have little, there's always themes. And then there's what I decide I want to get them. Um, <laughs> and But what did you ask me this year not to do? Because you had too much of. Would you always clothes. get it? Clothes. Because uh -huh. I have way too much clothes because every year I get like 10 pieces of clothes. Wow. I'll take the clothes if you don't want them. <laughs> because all of my shirts can't even fit in my own closet. I have really? to in my fish room. Oh. Well, maybe you should go through all the things that don't fit anymore and give no, them. No, that takes too much work. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Bailey! But, but don't we are? But what do we do? What do we do twice a year? Go through clothes. Go through clothes, and what do we do? Donate the clothes yeah. that doesn't fit. Right. So you you will be doing that at some point. So that's a good thing. We normally do it in the middle of the year, or more like at winter or in the middle of the year. That like we normally thing. never do it at summer. Never do it in the summer. Well, you're too oh, busy playing outside. Summer's such. break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do need more swimsuits. So, Honey, is it December? Yes, but I don't care. I still need more swimsuits. Okay. So, Bailey, I have a question for you. I understand that you go to your grandparents' house and do schoolwork, right? Yeah. What's, what's it like having, you know, Big Al and Grandma, you know, be your teachers. <laughs> She's rolling not my eyes. Teachers. Ah, they're, they're not, not your teachers. teachers. So, so they like, what do they do? They just like stay there. And sometimes BB helps plays a slime, gets me food and stuff like that. Boo Boo helps us with schoolwork. Like she helps me when my computer goes like, says cookies required. <laughs> That's when you go in the kitchen. Is that when you go in the kitchen and start baking? Cookies <laughs> required? <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you bake with BB? Yeah. And so what do you do with Big Al? With Big Al, he buys us Legos. <laughs> What? Nothing. She was talking about school, not what he buys you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With Biggie, he normally yeah, just yeah. sits there. And it, for Max, Big, Max would go to Big Al to help him with his math, but I would go to Boo Boo because Boo Boo's learning with me. I see. Well, you are very lucky 
to have them in your life and to have them actively in your life. You know that, right? So if you could say something special to them right now, what would you say? Um, I have to think about that one. Oh! <laughs> well, you think. <laughs> I love it. And, and, and interrupt us when we're at, at, at any time so you can yeah. give them a special message. Okay! <laughs> Why are you yelling in my ear? I don't know! <laughs> so... You, you brought up a really interesting comment, and I'm hoping that people will really take up on it, that it's not about perfection. It's about, you know, finding that inner joy. Yeah. I, 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 we, truly, like, what are the holidays about? Well, the holidays are about family. They're about getting together. Uh, they're about, well, for Christmas, it's celebrating the birth of Jesus which they can't even decide really when his birthday is. So we've got that. Um, we have the, like, you know, Hanukkah, where the, what's the, the history of that is like every other holiday we have, they try to kill us, we defeat them. There was, you know, and the, now we have food. So I, that, that's, that's the essence of, of Hanukkah. <laughs> um, you know, there's Festiva, there's Kwanzaa, winter solstice I, we there are so many things during this time right. and then um the new year i just think that we we've always put pressure because you're right like the hallmark the nuclear family yep the the this the that this has probably been probably one of the coolest hanukkahs for us well at least for me um because, you know, yes, the kids are at my parents' house every single day, so I, I'm at work. But, like, tonight, it's the last night of Hanukkah for the kids with me. Yeah. And, you well, know. the last one. No, tomorrow night is. But with me, it's the last night of Hanukkah. That too. <laughs> we have other years. Yes, honey. But for, for this year, for 2020. <laughs> Thank you. That's better. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> we have to be very literal. Yes. Yes. Uh, that okay. Stop, <laughs> please. The wood. Fine. But you know, for 2020, I wanted to have one night where I wasn't okay. We have to go do this. Like Monday, Bailey had dance, so we got to we did we light the menorah as a family, which I always love, and we have a ton of menorahs. And um, you know, so that's always really pretty because I like candles. If I didn't like candles so much, I don't know if the menorah would be so beautiful to me. But I, I, I do. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but still, life continued. Like we, I still had to work. I still had to, you know, take her to dance, and rush home. Yesterday, yeah, because it is Wednesday. Uh, you know, like Sunday, I picked them up from their dads. We went to my parents' house so we could have our first night of Hanukkah. Right. Um, so that's even different and just so designated how time and dates because you know what i need a calendar anyway like we do. It, i know honey. <laughs> otherwise we'd be celebrating hanukkah in july yeah <laughs> yes it is july oh <laughs> <laughs> you know um but the kids little presents you talk about that i got every year they get an ornament for the tree so today, last, yes, night. last night, we got ornaments that have masks on them or something like that. Yeah, we have everything about what 2020 was. Yeah. And if you look at it, you could look at it two ways. This is very sad because the world has changed. Or I look at it like, yeah, the, the year we ran out of toilet paper and couldn't find it, the year that we couldn't travel, the year that we couldn't do it's this. It's kind of the list that's on my ornament. It is the list that is on your ornament. But you know, <laughs> it, it's, a great, it's a great reminder for us. You know, um, I have a t-shirt that um, is very explicit about the year 2020. <laughs> and I was wearing it at the grocery store a couple weeks ago when it was still warm and I had somebody come up to me and said why would you want to wear that I said because I gotta smile and laugh about it because if I don't I'm gonna end up being very very depressed yes 
we've had shortages. It is said that, you know, you have to stop and think where you really can go and where you can't go, who you can be, you know, which of your friends you really can see. Um, I have a couple of friends who don't believe in wearing a mask and don't believe in social distancing. And uh, they've come and rang my doorbell and I've looked through the people and said, no, not today, because I don't want to expose myself. Now, six months or a year from now, if things change, yeah, I'll open my door and they can come straight in. But it is a good reminder of what we've been through and maybe what we have to think about going forward, you know, being more careful. Well, not only, so it amazes me about this whole washing hands thing because it's so, it's preschool, right? Now you're picking your nose. I like, know. <laughs> I'm scratching my nose. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> like, but I, how many, I wash my hands. We had to tell people to wash their hands. <laughs> like, sadly, sadly, we do. I mean, go into a restaurant in the notes in the bathroom are reminding servers, you know, and the people who work there to wash their hands. You know, and I've seen servers go into the bathroom and they're right. walking straight out. And so I think we think of that as, well, of course I know to do it, but I'm going to choose not to do it right now. Well, and, and okay, I mean, we, we, we live in the Western world and we have choices and free will and all of these lovely, th you know, things. Um, you know, it's so funny because I just, I don't know if, I, I'm not in denial, but I think my brain has just went to, I have to, and we've talked about this, embracing things. Right. Like, oh, this is the new normal. I don't look at it as the new normal. I just look at it as like, oh, it's maybe Thursday. I don't know what day. I mean, that, that is becoming a little bit of a it problem. It is Wednesday, not Thursday. Thursday's tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> She's your calendar. She is. I'm not a calendar. No? You're my reminder? No. What are you? I'm a kid. You're a kid? Ah. Oh. Are you sure? Yes, I'm eight. Are you a puppy? <laughs> but I mean, like, but, but here's the thing. So I could look at COVID as being absolutely the most horrible, shitty thing on the planet. Or I can look at it like I get to spend my morning with my new puppy. <laughs> that, that came puppy, like, that came puppy trains. Well, and I have to agree with you because for the first four or five months, both my husband and my son were not working. And when I first thought about the fact that I'm going to wake up every morning and I'm going to have these two additional adults in my house, um, you know, that was sort of in the beginning, it, I thought I was going to be annoyed about it because I'm used to them both going to work in the morning and me coming into the studio and working with no, none of their obligations. And yet I found with them being home that we all found our own space, which was good, but it was nice knowing that they were here. And we yeah. actually got along very, very well. We didn't get in each other's faces. And if we did, um, you know, we raised our voices for a few minutes and then we got over it. Um, so it gave me time to really get to know both my son and my husband in a different way than normal. So there have been good things. Yeah, I mean, there. I think it's a matter of how you look at it. And I'm definitely not like, oh, the glass is, you know, half empty, half full. I'm like, oh, there's a glass with liquid in it. Like, that's exciting. <laughs> I didn't break it today. But I, I think that, that there's, we talked before um, recording about like a COVID holiday. We're, I, I don't look at it like COVID. I mean, yes, it's the invasion of the vid and, and everything else. And before I've talked about the fact of this virus made me take a pause and, and, and reevaluate my life. And it, it has, and it continues to, um, to, you know, getting to know myself better or differently. Um, or like what I'm going to allow in my space and what I'm not going to allow in my space. 
um, you know, looking at different, like in Ohio, you guys have stuff that's open. We, do, right. I can't go right. sit in, an, in a restaurant inside, which I mean, yes, now food is becoming very boring and I really, you know, could give that up for a couple days, but I, I'm like, I'm not, the outlets that I used to have aren't here right now. Right. And then I have to look at it like, why do I need an outlet? Why can't I enjoy my children? Now, granted, I I have three places. I well, five total. I have my house. I have my parents' house. I have my office. I have the salon, and I have <laughs> where I the Pilates studio. And I have select friends that whose houses I will go to. And there's only a select people who can come here. But you know what? That's okay. <laughs> well, and, and as I listen to you rattle those off, okay, um, we all can find those, maybe not five, okay? Right. But we all can find a couple different places. Um, we did a show the other day, and we were they were talking about how people are so isolated. And in the beginning of all this, I was recovering from my knee surgery. Right. I really couldn't walk. I really couldn't do anything. But once I could start walking, I realized going outside for a walk, even if it was only for a five minute walk, changed my attitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started talking to people about, yes, you can go out on your patio. You can go out on your balcony. Uh, you know, there are different areas you can go to. Um, maybe you can't go out and eat in a restaurant, but there, you know, there are pickups and there are drive-throughs. You know, if getting pre-made food is important, okay, or something you want to do at that moment, there are places and things that you can do. Yes, it's different now. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the differences I'm enjoying because my husband used to feel that twice a week he should take me out to eat because of work and everything. And I would say, well, that's great. But we weren't going any place where the food was all that enticing. Right. And at the end of the day, it was like we were spending a lot of money for something that I didn't enjoy. I enjoyed his company there, but not the food. And so now I have to look at it and say, where can I enjoy your company? and not have to eat food that I really don't care about. And so we find that. We'll get in the car, we'll take a ride to the park, and we'll sit in the park. Um, you know, we had a policeman knock on our window one day, asking us what we were doing. And we oh. were both, no, and the funny <laughs> part is, we were both just sitting there talking. You know, like there was no movement at all. But we thought it was funny, and it made us feel like teenagers. Okay. So. Um, so this holiday, uh, in many ways, uh, is sort of the same for you as it has been in the past because you purchased your kids the gifts that you normally would have purchased them. Right. You spent the time with your family. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we're all learning and just listening to Lil Bailey there. She's, she's still happy. Mm -hmm. She is. You know, it and it doesn't take that much to make our kids happy. Um, they have to see that we're we're happy. Well, I, I think that there's part of it. I mean, they 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 I think have a little bit of different perspective just because you know they're they're kind of isolated. But when I come home from work and I don't, I, I, the bottom line, I don't hide it from my kids. And, and I don't even know if it's right or wrong. And I just know, again, we talk about what works for me. Right. They need, they need to see, you know, do they get all the details about COVID? No, they don't. Uh, do they know if mom's had a really bad day and I just, I can't hear it anymore? Of course they do. And they, and I share that with them when I'm overwhelmed or I'm tired, you know, they've seen me cry. They've seen me cry many times. They've seen through COVID of, you know, their mom having a hard time getting out of bed. 
because I, I couldn't fake it. And there was nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I have a nice size house, but it's not that big. Um, but, you know, th those memories or those moments, why are they happy? You know, they, they got their schoolwork done, which, of course, the day that, like, I have something to do, because on Wednesdays in the morning, Wednesdays are usually my day off except for in the evening, I have you every other week right. and then I've got um, a patient, but they're at their dad's. So Wednesday mornings, they get their mom. And we do schooling a little bit different than, I, we, than they do at my parents' house, which is fine. I think she's probably happy that they got to sleep in. <laughs> she's still in her pajamas, clearly she's still in her pajamas. <laughs> and I'm just here. And, and I think that that's, that is the gift that I have get, gotten, well, received from COVID is the sense of there were times because I was been a working mom, there, both of their whole lives, I literally had five weeks off um, after they were born. And I've always said, oh, I lost all this time. I lost all this time. So I've, oh, I lost changing diapers feeding them like which I guess what I it was still there exactly. when I came home from work exactly um, you know I get to watch them learn and I get to be here with them and there's that snuggle and there's the whatever um two years ago had she come in here knowing like hey I've got this podcast I probably would have been irritated to be honest you know, talk about perfect, like, well, this is a professional thing, even though it's a fun thing. Like, this is this, like, why? And now I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, because this is my life. We're talking life. Right. <laughs> it's legit. And, <laughs> and that's what I truly appreciate about this, is because they are part of your life. And other people who are watching this, okay, um, they have to acknowledge that as well, that if you've created this family, okay, this family is part of who you are, okay? Um, there have been a couple of times during a podcast, and if my husband was home, he'll walk into the studio. You know, he tiptoes in, but sometimes he ends up over my shoulder. Um, and, you know, I just make a joke of it because we share the same room. And, you know, he's on one side, I'm on the other. But you're right. A couple of years ago, it probably would have bothered me more, but now it's like, you know what? Life is too short. And every subject that we talk about on our podcast is about reality. And the reality of it is, you know, if your kid, your husband, your mom, your dad, somebody in your life needs you, you can have yeah. to stop what you're doing. And it's worth stopping for a cuddle with Bailey. Yeah. Oh, well, that's always come first. I mean, they, right or wrong, they are the epicenter of my life. And through my darkest, darkest times, and even the darkest times through COVID, uh, they were definitely, you know, with the, uh, because COVID's still going on. So, so I'm reminded, um, they are the reasons why I got out of bed. And th quite frankly, they know it. They know that, you know, I just, I don't want to adult today. I don't want to do this today. I don't want to know that today. Now, are there some great things that have come out of their mouths? No. Do I like, now I don't drink as much and I purposely through this time have been, I, I probably drink more now than I have in a while, but I, it's very limited because I can, I could see that going down a path, but like Max had said something about, um, oh, do you need a, a glass of wine tonight? <laughs> like, Whoa. is it a bourbon? Is it a bourbon night, mom? <laughs> and because I'm a single mom, and it's just the three of us here, I don't drink when they're here. Because God forbid, and, and I'm, I've got, I'm neurotic about that too. But <laughs> I mean, we. I was thinking about it this morning, and I was like, I showered and got makeup on and got dressed for for this. But I was like, literally in the shower being like, no, I had to shower. I definitely have to put a little bit of makeup on, but I like, 
And I'm sitting here going like, I, I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't. But, and so like what the holidays are, what you make of them. I, I happen to enjoy this relaxed, non-formal uh, way of being. I like, I have to go do this. I have to. And then like, who wrote the rules on that? And yeah, there, there are some things that are traditional, but going back to how we started about the Royal family, like the, they all give each other gag gifts. And they open their presents up on Christmas Eve, not on Christmas Day, because they're in church. You know, like, but that's their thing is, and they have, you looking at photos, and then what's been reported, you know, their charades, it is literally all about family time. Now, granted, it is in tiaras and black tie affair, which I think is fantastic. But I mean, why not? Why not get completely made up and act like asses? I think that is fantastic. What? Hi. Hi. Still recording. I know. Okay. Did you need some help? Yeah. Or you just want to hang out? Thank you. What do you need help with? Getting the uh, floor part up. Do you? You can open it. I, we, I'm not putting your floor, your ballet floor together right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it won't get out of the box. Well, then just keep it in the box. You know, it's a floor. I, I got the bar part out. You got? Did you put? Did you assemble the bar? I have no idea how to assemble. Oh. It. Oh, does it come with instructions? Yeah. Oh well, you have twenty minutes of reading. Why don't you read the instructions? That could no. go for your twenty minutes of reading. Miss Sage might be watching this, Miss Wood. So. Whoa. Why don't you read? She probably won't. Thanks, <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> oh, Bailey. I love it. Uh, so, yes, we're perfectly imperfect here. And I don't care. And that's, and I think that's the pressure of things. And I remember it, it didn't even have to be Hanukkah. But, like, the pressure of Shabbat, the pressure of this, this whole entire, like, show, so to speak. And I was raised like, no, like we do do things authentically, except I guess for that asterisk for holidays. Um, and I don't, I don't know, like the, the, for me, I like the fact that I can go over there in pajamas. I don't have to get dressed, yay, uh, <laughs> which is a new thing. Uh, I, you know, do I like the hustle and bustle? I love being around my family and friends, but I love being around my family and friends all the time so it's not like why put so much pressure on a date right exactly. like that to me is crazy um and, and it's my life so we know something's gonna go wrong something's bound <laughs> to happen because nothing ever goes smoothly well and i and i love the fact that i finally have gotten to that point too where it doesn't have to be on a certain day or on a certain time. I mean, growing up, I grew up in a in a society where Friday night was date night and Saturday night was definitely date night. And if you didn't have a date, you didn't say anything to anybody because you didn't want to come to school Monday and admit that you didn't have a date. Right. Um, and holidays were the same way that a holiday came and um, whether you went to temple or church or wherever you went, those are the things that you did. You dressed a certain way. And as I was getting older, um, and especially, you know, when I married Rich, um, I didn't know what my place was. You know, his family was not a religious Christmas family. And yet, you know, oh, we had to go there for Christmas, you know, and all these things that we had to do in the hustle and bustle at the end of the day. I probably cried every Christmas because so much energy was put into it and it just didn't meet Hallmark standards. Now, I don't want Hallmark standards. I don't want to have to put on glitz and glamour to go sit on a sofa for the afternoon. <laughs> well, we'd like to sit in glitz and glamour. We would do that and just sit on the couch, right? Yeah. Makeup and, and a fancy dress. I mean, my God, you're wearing pajamas and a tiara. Yeah. <laughs> it goes well together. Well, 
I'm so glad that we got to talk about holidays together. I'm glad that Bailey joined us today. Me too. <laughs> and I'm hoping, you know, for our listeners that uh, we can get that show together that you've been talking about, about cars, because we don't necessarily expect women mm-hmm. to know anything about cars or even go head to head with men about cars. And, right. Um, we used to do a show here about cars and little things that I learned. Okay. I thought I knew, I mean, I would look at the label and say oil change, you know, and I had like 500 miles. I had to make an appointment. Um, but I didn't know how to look for a lot of these things on my own. And when we started talking about it, it was like, that makes a lot of sense. These are things I should know. Cause if I have to take it to a mechanic, I want to know what I'm talking about and what he's talking about. So well, sure. I, I mean, yeah, I, so I'm excited about that. Our next podcast is actually the day before New Year's Eve. Ah. So yes, because I actually had to look at the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so impressive. Thanks. <laughs> Got a plan ahead there. Um, And so, you know, that's, it kind of is the, the precursor. So I do want to, I mean, my car friends and, and, and stuff. So I'm going to try to get our acts together um, and and do that show. And, um, but, you know, I'm starting to think about how interesting it will be if we're ending the, we're ending the year together. Yes. (laughs) I, I love that. And for all of our listeners out there, um, you know, I've known your mom most of my life. uh, And I've said it before, we uh, separated due to miles and other things that went on in our life. But getting back together, um, and I don't have to talk to her all the time. And I don't have to, and I don't think I've talked to her probably in two years at this point. Um, but But I do connect with her on Facebook. And I know what's going on between her and Big Al. And I know what's going on with you and your sisters. And those connections, even if I only see it on Facebook, you know what? It is warming. And I think that's what people need to understand. There's all different ways of connecting and making our life feel good. And um, I'm definitely not perfect because if you saw what was below this shirt, you would realize that I am dressed for Zoom. (laughs) (laughs) I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, there's a reason of the angle of the computer in my bedroom. <laughs> Under, uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, listen, my, my big sister from, from Greer, uh, we were talking about the other day. I haven't seen her in 22 years. I haven't seen her in tw- yeah. like physically in 22 years. It is crazy to think, and her son, who's 16, my nephew, he's like, the two of you are so close. He, he's like, it, it is unreal that f- the fact of, he know, he's seen pictures of me. Right. He knows who I am. He knows my voice. And my kids, they know who he is. They know who their Auntie Cam is. They've never physically touched, but we're a constant in each other's lives. And they just know. And I I think it's just, if if that's anything for the holidays, you know, it's not, it's not, you don't have to socially isolate, you have to physically distance. And I think that those are very, because isolation means that you are on on an island by yourself. And at times, trust me, it feels like an island by yourself. But we had that before. It, what we're talking really about is the physical distancing. And socially, y- y- you find ways to connect with who you want to connect with. Absolutely. A- and you know what? The holiday is really, it, can be, it, it is what you make it. It can be about forgiveness. It can be about reuniting. It, it, and you know what? You can make the holidays hell if you want to. You can have the, the, the sad party um, the pity party is, uh, of, oh my God, our whole entire family that we don't want to go see anyway, can't get together, have the big argument, you know, grandma's the, the biggest racist ever, so don't want to be around her, and we can go through that, 
through all the miserable things of the holidays and we can chalk it up to, but that's the holidays. Or we can take a look at it and kind of go, you know what, the holidays are supposed to be about love and are supposed to be about whatever you make it. So mm-hmm. I look at it like, you know, it's it's a rebirth type thing. It's a, it's a reevaluation. And, uh, you know, it, 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 well, everything I do is out of love. So, and, and so that's how I choose to look at it. That, that I had four crazy nights, but my nights are crazy anyway. So we just four in a row, you know, of eating fried food, which I don't like, but you know what? It's, it, I chose to eat latkes because my kids love them. So, okay. I'm not going, oh no, keto diet. Like can't do that. But no, I, I've broken every keto rule for like the last month. So you know what? Do I care? No, zero. I don't care. I'm eating the traditional foods um, and non-traditional foods. I am being with my family. And I am really, truly just taking this time to go, okay, I, I, my life has not going to change. This holiday is not of epic proportions. No, there's no doom and gloom of, well, this might be grandma's last you know, Hanukkah. I'm really trying to live in the moment. Absolutely. And you know, and Amazon at 3.30 in the morning really, really upset me. I think it was because it was at 3.30 in the morning and what the hell am I doing looking on the Amazon going, where the hell is this? <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other podcast. Of yeah. life. But, but you know, and, and he doesn't care. You know, we, we adopt families every year for the holidays because I, that, that is something that I have done for decades. And it's something that's very important to me. Um, This year, actually, I was supposed to take the kids on Christmas morning. I was going to help. We were going to do a soup kitchen thing. But because of it, it didn't happen. They know nothing about that. That's more something that's important to me. Right. uh, Because I used to do that all the time. But we adopt families. And usually the kids have always gone shopping with me. Well, we haven't done it this year. And so they don't know that I've already donated the money. They don't like, and so, because really right now, that's really what people are needing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and, 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 and a lot of people are, it's the basic survival. I mean, if I could, I would. And, and my parents would kill me if they heard this part of it. But if I didn't have, if my kids didn't have like our bubble, Right. I would open my house up to people because I just, it's, it, that's the scary part. People, you know, the, the worry of, of paying the electric bill or getting an electric scooter, you know, I, I, I pay the electric bill. Right. Like, you know, and, and, and I think that that's, I'm, I am very, I count my blessings every day that I'm able to provide a, a, a very good life for my children. Um, and, but I'm also very, very aware they are grateful for that, but they would be grateful for a pair of socks. Yep. And there are people that out there and they know this, that that is their, the, the socks are what they get this year. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that's probably for in the spirit of the holidays. If you are, if you feel like you have to do something or something is missing, you know, give to the food, local food pantry, give, give something back to somebody less fortunate. And then you can hang out with grandma and her racism next year. Like, and you can complain about the holidays, but I really think that there's, we can do more as a society and make that about the holidays and the spirit of the holidays about giving um, and, and, and spreading love. Absolutely. Um, and then you can, you know, bicker about cranberry sauce another day, or you could still bicker about it. I don't know. I, <laughs> but that's how I choose to live the holidays. Now it, it is very much in the moment, you know, being grateful, but I'm, but I, but I say this too, though, you don't need a holiday to be grateful. I wake up every morning saying, well, didn't die today. Thank God. You know, and I think in Judaism, they've got men have prayers about, thank God they didn't wake up a woman. I'm just happy that my eyes opened up. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I don't have this kind of pain today. This is exciting. Um, 
but I think that's also about COVID too, is it really gave me appreciation of the fact of, forget the, the what I have created. Um, Cause I have made, I want to have an empire. I will conquer the world. I've always been that way. How I do it, it doesn't, re- who knows, yeah, but you know. As long as you do it. Yeah. I can do it. But I think too of like, I, I think I start to look at like every day is a holiday. Every, if we're going to put that much emphasis on love, family, relationships, our children, that that shouldn't be just, what, it's like Mother's Day. Like that shouldn't just be one day of the year. Absolutely. A holiday shouldn't be just one day. Oh, I take this one time. You know, we, yes, we give throughout the year. It, that's something that's very important to me. And I help my friends and my family when it's needed all throughout the year. And I don't look for anything in return. And I don't, and that's the value I want to give to, like, share with my children. Because that, that truthfully has been what was shared to me. Holidays make it a little bit harder, but we don't have to. I think that intergenerational trauma of the holidays, we have passed down. Because I think that is when people would travel far. Right. And so there was this pressure and they've been, and they were stuck together <laughs> for copious amounts of times. Well, guess what? 2020 has been the big, the longest and the shortest year ever. And we've all been stuck together. And we're doing, for the most part, we're doing fine because so many people are, are learning how to help each other. They oh. are learning kindness. And uh, all it takes is just a little reminder. Um, and the other day, um, when I was at work, one of our coworkers was having a very difficult time and I sort of like moved almost 10 feet away and took my mask down and just gave her a big smile and then put it back up. And you know what? It was, it was what she needed because everything she was seeing was blank and she was hearing voices of customers who weren't happy and she was just getting anxious and was like, what can I do? And, you know, she thanked me afterwards. She said, oh my God, I got to see your face. That's what you really look like. And I thought, you know what? Never thought about it. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't know what I really look like. And um, that that brightened her up. So there are things that we can do. And when you make somebody else happy, um, it reflects on us as well. So Thank you so much for today. It's been wonderful. Enjoy your last night of Hanukkah with your kids, which is really not the last night because Bailey informed us of that. Yes. And give everybody at the Midland House my love, okay? I will tell everyone we said hi and happy holidays to all everybody and everyone continue to stay safe. But thank you so much. And I love you. You know that. And tell everyone I said hi. I will. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.